Welcome to another deep dive. Today, um, we're going to be tackling something that uh, might seem simple at first glance, but it's actually really nuanced. We're talking about answering questions in English. Oh, yeah. And we're not talking about like basic grammar here, but like the art of confident and impactful communication. Yeah. You know what's so fascinating about this is that answering questions well goes way beyond just knowing the right words. It's about understanding the subtleties of communication and adapting to different situations and ultimately making a genuine connection with the person you're talking to. That's so true. Yeah. Okay. So the source material for this deep dive is a comprehensive three-part guide on answering questions in English. It covers everything from you know, recognizing different question types to handling those curveball questions that can kind of leave you speechless. And trust me, even if you consider yourself fluent in English, you might be surprised by some of the insights and strategies we'll be unpacking today. For sure. So let's start with the foundation. The guide kicks off by breaking down all the various types of questions you'll encounter in English. From those straightforward yes or no questions to those tricky why questions that demand a bit more detail. Now, you might be thinking, I already know about question types, tell me something new. But stick with us, because recognizing these different forms is crucial for crafting relevant and targeted answers. It's like having a roadmap. It guides you towards the heart of what's being asked. Yeah, and the guide really emphasizes the importance of identifying keywords in a question. Right. It's like finding the treasure map hidden within the question itself. It leads you to the most relevant and informative response. For example, imagine someone asks, what did you enjoy most about your recent trip to Italy? If you launch into a detailed description of the flight there, you've missed the mark. The keywords here are enjoy and Italy, guiding you towards a response focused on the positive aspects of your Italian adventure. That's a great point. Staying relevant is key. And this actually goes hand in hand with another fundamental tip. Mm -hmm. um, and that is matching the tense of the question in your answer. Mm -hmm. If someone asks, did you finish the report? A simple, yes, I do, sounds jarring and shows a lack of attention to detail. It's those seemingly small grammatical details that can make a big difference in how you're perceived as a communicator. Right. Matching the tense demonstrates that you're not just hearing the words, but actively processing and engaging with the question. Okay, so now let's move beyond those one word yes or no answers, which, while grammatically correct, can sometimes come across as a bit flat or disengaged. The guide dives into the power of crafting full sentence responses that showcase your fluency and allow you to express yourself more fully. Okay, so think about it this way. Instead of simply saying yes to do you enjoy learning English, you could say something like, yes, I find learning English incredibly rewarding because it opens up a world of communication and connection for me. Which answer do you think would leave a more lasting impression? It's like turning a one word answer into a doorway to a whole new room of ideas. And you know what? This is especially crucial in situations where you want to project confidence and make a strong impression, like in a job interview. Absolutely. Imagine the difference between a candidate who simply mumbles yes when asked about their interest in the company and one who responds with, yes, I'm very interested in this company because I'm passionate about your mission and I believe my skills align perfectly with your goals. Wow. That's a perfect example of how a full sentence answer can truly make you stand out. But hold on, before we get too carried away with elaborate responses, the guide also wisely cautions against oversharing. Oh, I have a hilarious story about that. Once, someone asked me a simple question about my weekend plans, and I ended up giving them a 20-minute play-by-play of every single thing I was going to do, down to the grocery list and the brand of toothpaste I planned to buy. Uh. Let's just say their eyes glazed over pretty quickly. That's a classic example of crossing that fine line between being engaging and just overwhelming the listener with too much information. The key is to find that sweet spot where you're providing enough detail to keep things interesting, but not so much that you lose your audience. Got it. Okay. Now, what happens when you just don't know the answer to a question? It happens to all of us, and the guide offers some excellent advice on handling these situations gracefully. Blurting out, I don't know, can sound abrupt and unhelpful. Definitely. Instead, the guide suggests using phrases like, let me double check on that and get back to you, or that's a great question. I'll need to do a little research to give you an accurate answer. <laughs> These phrases not only convey your willingness to help, but they also buy you some time to gather your thoughts or find the information you need. It's all about maintaining that positive and helpful attitude, even in the face of uncertainty. 
Remember, it's perfectly fine not to have all the answers immediately, but it's how you handle those situations that can make a real difference in how you're perceived. You know, one of the most fascinating aspects of this guide is how it emphasizes that answering questions effectively isn't just about following a set of rules, it's about understanding the nuances of communication, almost like becoming a communication chameleon. A communication chameleon. I love that. So how do we become this master of adaptation? The guide talks a lot about reading the room and adjusting your response to fit the tone, audience, and context of the conversation. That's right. You wouldn't use the same language and tone when chatting with your friends as you would in a formal business meeting, right? It's all about recognizing those subtle cues and adapting your style accordingly. Okay, give us some concrete examples. Let's say you're hanging out with friends and they ask about your rent plans. In that scenario, you can be relaxed, casual, maybe even use some slang or inside jokes. You might say something like, oh, you know, just chilling with Netflix and catching up with friends. But imagine using that same phrase in a professional setting. Like when your boss asks about the progress of a project. Oh, I can see how that would be a disaster. So how would you adapt your answer for a more formal context? In a professional setting, you'd want to be more concise and use more formal language. You might say, I'm on track to complete the project by the deadline, and I'll be sure to keep you updated on any significant developments. It conveys the same basic information, but in a way that's appropriate for the context. This is making me think about how we tailor our communication when explaining things to different people, like how we'd simplify a complex topic for a child. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Whether you're talking to a child, a colleague, or a friend, you adjust your language, tone, and level of detail to suit their understanding and the nature of your relationship. It's about being mindful of your audience and their needs. So it's like becoming a communication detective. We gather clues about the people we're talking to, their background, their expectations, and then we tailor our responses to fit the puzzle perfectly. That's a brilliant analogy. Now let's take this idea of adaptability a step further and talk about those curveball questions, the ones that catch you off guard, maybe even make you feel a bit uncomfortable. What do we do then? These are the questions that make your mind go blank. The guide has some reassuring advice for navigating these situations, reminding us that it's perfectly acceptable to pause for a moment to gather our thoughts. We don't have to blurt out the first thing that comes to mind. Right. Sometimes a well-placed pause can make all the difference. It shows that you're taking the question seriously and considering your response carefully. You can even buy yourself some time by saying something like, that's a fascinating question. Let me think about that for a moment. Those little phrases are like magic spells for diffusing awkwardness. And while you're taking that pause, you can also think about how to best answer the question without revealing information you might not be comfortable sharing. Absolutely. You always have the right to set boundaries in a conversation. The guide even suggests politely redirecting the conversation if a question feels too personal or intrusive. So instead of feeling trapped by a question, we can gracefully steer the conversation in a different direction. Can you give us an example of how to do this tactfully? Imagine someone asks you a very pointed question about your salary during a casual conversation. You might feel uncomfortable disclosing that information. Instead of directly answering, you could say something like, I'm happy to talk about my career path and the type of work I do, but I prefer to keep details about my compensation private. That's a great example of redirecting the conversation while still maintaining a friendly and professional tone. Exactly. It's about being assertive, but also respectful. Now, there's one more crucial element the guide highlights that I want to discuss empathy. This is especially important when responding to questions that are emotionally charged or come from a place of vulnerability. This resonates with me so much. Sometimes people aren't looking for a factual answer or a clever response. They're seeking connection, validation, or simply a listening ear. How can we incorporate empathy into our answers in a genuine way? It starts with actively listening and trying to understand the emotions behind the question. A simple phrase like, I understand how you're feeling, can go a long way in creating a sense of connection and support. It's about acknowledging the other person's feelings and letting them know that they're being heard and understood. That can be so powerful, especially in those moments when someone is feeling anxious, confused, or simply needs a bit of reassurance. Think about it this way. Sometimes the way you answer a question matters more than the actual answer itself. It's about the human connection you create and the empathy you convey. It's amazing how much power we hold in those like seemingly small moments of communication. A thoughtful answer can brighten someone's day, ease their anxiety, or even spark a new connection. 
It all comes back to that core idea that answering questions effectively goes beyond textbook grammar. It's about understanding the human element, the emotions, and the intentions behind the words. I totally agree. The guide wraps up with a powerful question that I want to pose to you, dear listener. What's one small change you can make today to answer questions more confidently? It's a call to action, an invitation to take all of these insights and put them into practice. Yeah, maybe it's committing to using full sentences more often, paying closer attention to your tone, or practicing those graceful ways to handle uncertainty. Or perhaps it's about becoming more aware of your audience, tailoring your responses to fit the context or simply taking a moment to pause and truly consider the question before you answer. Whatever that small change may be, the key is to make that conscious effort to refine your communication skills and become a more confident and impactful communicator. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about answering questions correctly, but about connecting with others, sharing your ideas, and making your voice heard in a way that's clear, engaging, and authentic. So go out there and answer those questions with confidence, clarity, and a touch of that empathy we've been talking about. And remember, every conversation is an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to make a positive impact through the power of your words. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the art of answering questions. Until next time.